Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the show. This is Sports with Strawberry Ice. I'm your host, Jeff Trunapol. And as always, I'm bringing you sports from a west side point of view right here in the great city of Cincinnati, Ohio. Today is a very special day for me today because I have my very first guest. He is Bearcat legend and Bearcat broadcaster and a member of the Final Four 90, 92 Final Four team is Terry Nelson. How you doing today, Terry? Jeff, man, I'm, I'm happy to be alive and healthy, bro. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. I agree with you on that. How's uh, everything going with you with the uh, corona pandemic, and uh, how's your family? Family's good. Um, you know, we, we still, I, I still take my son out and train him. Football, we go up to UC and train. It, we had to leave Nippert Stadium because there was just too many people around there, so it's not really a chance to really social distance, but we go over to the soccer field, and it's a lot more space, so right. you know, I got to make sure I get my couple of miles in, and he's throwing passes to you know, his teammates, and then we, you know, I, I keep a big bottle of hand sanitizer. Right, <laughs> right, right. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, he sanitizes his football, he sanitizes <laughs> his hands, all the receivers, and I'm like, look, you know, now the second evolution of that is playing, you know, getting this workout in, right. mask on. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, but I, I feel you. I, I still going to work myself. I got to wear a mask every day. I know last time I talked to you, we were going to try to do this interview uh, around the AAC tournament, but, you know, that right. that, that never happened. So uh, what was the reaction like uh, down there from the Bearcat players, coaches, you know, when the uh, tournament got canceled? It was a lot of uncertainty. Right. Because um, we were sitting around, and, I, you know, I – room on the road with Andre Fouché this year. He's our sports information director. Okay. And so he's always the first to hear about whatever because he's in contact with league office and other SIDs and they're on this group chat and group text and, and it goes immediately like there'll be a group text and they'll get a something from the league office and then all of a sudden you'll get an email that goes up on the website that says breaking news. Um, you know, GoBearCats.com and then they'll have the the schedule conference has been canceled so we're sitting over here and we had a bye right. so it was a Thursday and we were going to go over to the arena and watch the other teams play and so we're just sort of hanging out and we were it was about 11.30 the game started at 12 and all of a sudden we get to about 11.30 and they said well the games have been canceled the tournament have been canceled and right. I was like, oh, man, are you serious? And so there was so much uncertainty. And then they then they canceled, but we know the NBA canceled first. Right, right. And then they canceled the tournaments. Mm-hmm. And then they said, we're going to cancel the first four. And then, uh, you know, you got word that they're going to cancel the NCAA tournament. Right. And it, was just, it was devastating because, you know, you look at the work that the guys had put in to get to that spot. And, yes, they did finish, you know, tied for first in the conference. Um, and it has some great accolades with, with, with Trey Young. I'm sorry, Trey Young. <laughs> Trey Scott. <laughs> I, I knew who you meant. <laughs> he was shooting like Trey Young for a minute. He, he, dude, he sure was there that, down the stretch. He was, he was playing really well. Yeah, but to see them guys not be able to, you know, put a um, a nightcap on their career. Right. Because yeah. you put all the work in. Mm-hmm. I mean, Trey was just, Trey was like one of those guys that was him and Gary Clark. You'd be lucky if you got one of those in your program, in right. the history of your program. And you hope that one person could be a model for everybody else. And the great thing about Trey is that he saw Gary. He saw Gary's ascension. He saw the work that Gary put in. He saw Gary constantly in the training room, even though he wasn't hurt. He was just doing preventative stuff, icing, stretching, getting stem, um, using all the technology, trying to grow understand the one understand the game on a higher level Trey took on the same mentality uh, Gary Clark was always in hospitals visiting kids and sick patients and doing outreach and just letting his presence be felt knowing that he's the face of Cincinnati basketball which is a big brand in the greater Cincinnati area if not nationally and he's the face of that brand and so he would use his platform to be in hospitals to speak at clubs uh, you know, youth organizations and Trey took on that same moniker. So to see both of those guys and to see Trey not be able to finish what he started was a little disheartening. But as he put it, if 
getting the offensive rebound put back to win the conference championship. Yep, exactly. Was the end of his career. Right. He's okay with that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's one of the things I said on my show because I know he uh, he did a story on I think it was Bearcats dot com or something that he's you know devastated is the way the the season ended. But that's what he said because that's the way my career ended. That's that's a great way to end it. And one thing I said is. One good thing is the Bearcats ended their season on a win. <laughs> Most of the time, we you know end up unless you win the whole thing, you know you, you don't you don't you end the, your season on a on a loss. So at least at least they won that last game, so that was good. Right, right. Yeah, well, for them to, to put together the season that they had and how it started. Right. And you know, I just love. Um, I'm gonna go into my bromance right now. <laughs> I'm All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So he looks at a 30 game season and I looked at it at six, five game segments and he looks at it at five, six game segments. And so because they spend so much money in analytics to try to figure out how they're going to, you know, the information, he says the information is out there. So use it to not just know about your opponents, but to know about yourself. Right. Um, and so he would take this information and you would have to get sample size. So he couldn't just do it um, to start. What he would do was he would take the first six games and then looked at the deck because they would give him this exhaustive uh, outlook of his team. And he found out that, you know, Chris McNeil was better coming off the bench because the team had a higher production and a faster pace with Mike Adams was that point guard. Right. And then the next twelve, the next six games got us to um, after the Iowa game. Yeah. And coach sat down in the locker room after the team got dressed. Uh, the team were in one side. He went back to the coach's locker room, and I heard this from one of the coaches. Coach Brandon said something to the effect that I feel like I'm letting you guys down, and I'm letting the team down. Hmm. Um, I'm not doing the best job with this team what he meant was uh, his system doesn't fit the personnel that they have right right so it, he's gonna break the system and recreate it mm-hmm. so 50 percent of it he can keep in you know the hard the toughness the, the full court man-to-man but some of the offensive schemes some of the defensive schemes they're gonna mix up because jaron's playing but jaron's playing hurt so right. how do you conceal that uh, Jaren shouldn't be picking up full court, so Keith can pick up full court. You know, at times let's go one three one with Mama do up top. All right. So he did all these things to change it, but the pace he wants to play breakneck pace. Yeah, he wants to play really fast. Yes. Made or miss, like right. he wants to. Be, you know, he wants to get into the eighty five. Right. Know, he wanted to be average in high eighties, and he couldn't do that all the time with Jaren. Jaren would sometimes catch it off the rebound or get it out of bounds real quick and hit a kick ahead to Keith. You know, but he wanted it all the time. Right. And so he's going to get a chance to do that. But he didn't get a chance to do it as much as he wanted to this year. So I would say about 70%, if that, of his system was put in. Mm-hmm. One of the things I love about him is his, uh, you know, after that, he put the ball in the hands of Jared. Right. Because the data showed that when Jared, he, he's just such an efficient player, he affects mm-hmm. winning, in, you know, with his passing his ability to play pick and roll basketball. So just taking the numbers, taking the data, making it work for his team, he found out that certain guys shoot better from the left three-point wing wow. than they do on the right. So when he starts diagramming plays, he's diagramming them for that person to come over there in their sweet spot so they can make a shot. So it doesn't seem like much. It seems like you should be able to you know, make shots all over the floor. Everybody has a favorite spot. Yeah, I was about to say, I said, I said everybody's got a favorite shot. I even had one. I mean, not anymore, but, you know, <laughs> back in the day, <laughs> I had your, a favorite your shot. Chances, <laughs> your chances of making the shot go up incredibly. Right. When you believe that this is your spot. Right. That's that's you know, it's interesting. They break it down that much. I didn't realize they broke it down to the sides, the spot, everything of, to where they make the their most consistent uh, shooting. That's, that's, I mean, that's a totally different... I'm sure they didn't have analytics back uh, on the 92 team. I don't think Huggins uh, probably had anything to do with that. <laughs> no. no. His analytics was in his head. <laughs> right, 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 right. And he told you exactly what he wanted. 
whether, whether you wanted to hear it or not, right? <laughs> whether you wanted to hear it or not. <laughs> just to button up the John Brennan uh, thing. Huh? But what, just, what he would do during timeouts, his play calling is just it's second to none. I mean, to see the stuff he draws up, out-of-bounds plays, mm -hmm. he calls them just when they – sometimes just because they're tired – he gets the ball down, knowing that he can take it below the free throw line to get the ball underneath. He'll call a timeout there. And then he'll draw up an out-of-bounds play underneath to get a duck in for Chris Bolt because Chris hasn't touched the ball in a while. And they're right. double-teamed him, and you can't double-team out of an out-of-bounds play. Right. So just those little just those little things when you see it from an analyst's point of view, and it's like, man, this guy's play calling is elite. Yeah. His thinking is elite. Mm -hmm. And it took them a while, the Bearcats, to figure out is his method and once they figured out his method coach brandon was saying all year long he goes we're going to play better at the end of the season he said because my system is geared to get better and better as the games go on because they're going to get more comfortable in some of the things you're doing in practice which is going to create the habits that will show in the game right so he said we're going to get better we're going to get better we're going to get better and then sure enough they had that stretch of four mm -hmm. conference overtimes in a row yeah you know a double overtime mm -hmm. i mean just unbelievable minutes but each and every game they came back from deficits right and it just shows you the mental toughness and the play calling and the ability to fight through adversity because bad calls foul trouble turnovers missed shots they just found a way to claw back and get into a game right you never felt they were ever out of the game no matter how far they got down this past year and I, I, I think Coach Brandon did a tremendous job just from coming in you know the new coach you know, you got guys that left. He brought some new guys in. He had freshmen coming in. You know, you had guys leave during the season. His father passed away. I mean, there was so much up and down emotions that I think and just stuff he had to deal with that hopefully next year in a normal season, you know, he won't have to deal with that. I think he handled all of it great. And the Bearcats, I was very excited about the AAC tournament and seeing how it was going to end, you know, how, how they were going to respond because I was – they were, I won't say hitting on all cylinders, but they were pretty close. That's right. And they felt it. You know, we, we sat around, and I would ask Trey Scott, and I said, Trey, you know, every year in the Final Four, there's at least one of the Final Four, if not two, of the number one seed in the Final Four. Right. I said, and then there's always a two or three seed, you know, that made it possibly a four seed. I said, but then there's always a Cinderella. <laughs> Lately, it's been a you know a 11 seed or a 9 seed or right. 12 seed. I said, so once you get in the tournament, why not us? Exactly. Goes, that's what he said. Now that's what I'm talking. About. <laughs> I'm start saying that. Yeah, why not us? Why right. That's exactly right. Yeah. So this was right before the you know we were getting on the plane going to the conference championship, and the conference championship gets canceled. So the why not us? <laughs> yeah, it kind of went out the window, but I, I I agree with you. It was it was a very stressful up and down season, but I mean, I would have loved to have found out what would have happened. And and uh, uh, you know, we gotta get to the another uh, guy. I want to ask you about is uh, I know it's close to to you and to the Bearcats is that we uh, all lost this past year was Chuck Mayshock. and uh, just some thoughts on on him. Have you got any any cool Chuck stories or anything like that? Chuck was my man. <laughs> Yep. Chuck was just, he was always, you know, he always called you candy ass. You didn't do something you were supposed to do. <laughs> we didn't give it the 100% effort, but he was a direct communicator and a, and a tremendous coach. Like, he could really teach. And as a coach, either you're play calling when you're a head coach, but as an assistant coach, you're teaching. Right. So it's a different thing. So he was a tremendous teacher how to break the game down into segments, footwork, positioning, timing. Um, just seeing the game from a different perspective. My junior college, junior college coach, Gary Anderson, was that when we were in Long Beach City. And I was always talented, but I, I didn't know the fundamentals. Right. And then he, he broke the fundamentals down to me and taught me the game. Right. And it was like, I took a big leap. We went to the state championship and lost to Corey Blunt and Eric Martin in the state championship. We all came out here, and then I had another good coach. Mm -hmm. But Bob Huggins was a great teacher, and Chuck Mayshot, who was a tremendous low post coach teacher and taught us positioning toughness, how to box um, aggressively, how to read shoulders on defense, 
And, uh, you know, and so me being able to take the charge was based on the positioning and the quickness and the post that I learned from Chuck Mayshop. Right. Yeah, Chuck was a great guy. I mean, I, obviously, I don't know him from coaching. I just know him from listening to the broadcast. And, and Dan Horde would always end the show after, or, you know, how many days it's been that since Chuck Mayshock has gotten thrown out. And that always, I always chuckled when, when he would bring that up. It was like 446. Yeah, so, something like that. Because I'll never forget it. I, I was I was listening to the game and I was working and, and I missed the whole thing when Chuck got thrown out. But one of my, my managers came up and he was a Louisville fan. And he goes, hey, one of your broadcasts just got thrown out of the game. I said, what? I said, that's got to be Chuck. So I, I turned the game back on and Dan's like, well, I'm here all by myself in the booth. So... That was just a, a funny, interesting Chuck moment that, you know, I, I love Chuck Mayshock. Like I said, I don't know him personally, but I, I love listening to him on the broadcast and the struggle for the stake and all that. All that stuff was really, really neat uh, to listen to him on the broadcast. So uh, I'm going to get back to you talking about when you played uh, against Corey Blunt and uh, junior college and stuff, and then you guys all decided to come to Cincinnati. Um, how did that all, how, how did you get to become a Bearcat? Well, Corey and I would play my first year. I went out of, out of high school. I went to Cal State Fullerton. Okay. And uh, the coach got fired, or he, you know, it was a study, and he, he resigned. And I actually said, I, I need to get out of here because I don't want to play for somebody that I didn't come to play for. Right. And so the assistant coach, Donnie Daniels, was a longtime assistant with uh, Gonzaga now. He said, Why don't you play for my buddy at LA Harbor? That's where Pete Rose went to junior college. Okay. He said, go play for him. I said, all right. So I go over there, we play, and we have the most wins in school history, which was 23. We're 23 and 11. And I was sort of the game changer for him because there was a, the run of the meal program. And then we played Corey Blunt's team, Rancho uh, Santa Ana, in the, cha- uh, in the second round. Okay. And so their team won the state. Their team was undefeated. They had one loss. And they ended up winning the state that year. And Corey was the player of the year. But I had a really big game against that team. And when they came back, I transferred to Long Beach City. And we had a stacked team. Eric Martin transferred from TCU, Texas Christian, to join Corey. And so I'm like, man, stacked team already. Right. We played him five or six times in the summer league. Right. And had battles going back and forth. And then we would just hang out. You know, athletes do when you play in these tournaments and stuff. We would just hang out and talk and right. chop it up. And right. we were talking about, you know, some of the schools that we were going to visit. And I said, I'm going to visit Cincinnati. And Corey said, yeah, man, they recruited me hard. He was talking about Steve Moeller. I said, yeah, Steve Moeller. He said, all right, we should take our trip together. So it was like, bet. So we took a trip. And we went down there. And I said, man, the first night, I said, I'm signing with Cincinnati. <laughs> what soldier? He said, he said, what are you talking about? I said, well, you got to... Same thing that Corey said. I said, look, you got a, a coach out here that wants to press. The same style that we play in junior college, both Corey and I. Mm-hmm. I said, he wants to play that. I said, he's a great teacher. He's a great demander. I said, it's a, a great atmosphere. It's a new arena, and there's no pro basketball team here. Right. I said, so there's a lot of entertainment here, a lot of nightlife, a lot of clubs. I said, but we are the main attraction when it comes to basketball, mm-hmm. us and Xavier. So, but I was really more concerned about us because everybody was like, this is a Cincinnati town. If you win, the town is yours. So we were like, this is where I want to be. And Corey was like, man, I'm going to Tennessee and Utah and all these places. So he took his trip. Right. I canceled the rest of mine. No, I took the Hawaii trip for the second time. Hey, I, <laughs> I, I don't blame you there. I, I think I would have taken the Hawaii trip too, man. <laughs> yeah. And so he ended up signing. And then once he signed, it was committing. And then once he committed, we went after Eric Martin. And then Eric was like, man, Corey told me that you guys had a good a good time down there. What, what, why did you want to? I said, just go. Just take a trip. <laughs> so he took a trip. He ended up signing. And so they called Steve Muller the California caper. He said, hey, man, we were the three best players in California. Right. And he got all of us to go to Cincinnati. We got, he got Nick Van Exel out of uh, Trinity Valley in Texas Junior College from Kenosha, Wisconsin. Grabbed him. We already had Herb Jones, who was the National Junior College Player of the Year, who had a great first year at UC, dunking on Louisville and all that stuff. Yep. We had him. Then you had Anthony Buford, who transferred from Akron, sat out that year, who wanted to establish himself. So you had all this mix. Mm-hmm. Then you had AD and Terrence. You had great. 
we just hit it off as best friends the minute we got together. Right. I mean, we were always together. And it was that kind of bond that we were able to be frank with each other. Like, we can tell guys when they got beat back door that, man, you're getting your ass towed up today. Come on, man. What are you, you know, and that competitive nature, we can talk right. to each other like brothers. Right. And so that kind of communication, that kind of bond allowed us to have the kind of run that we had over those two years, 56 and 10, 29 and 5, the final four one year, 27 and 5 with the league eight overtime loss in the yeah. second year. Oh, that overtime loss. Class, beast. Right. Yeah. I mean, that you guys. I mean, you guys are the ones that got the program uh, back on track to, to, you know, back from where, where it was back in the '60s when we wanted, you know, back-to-back years. I mean, we're, there really wasn't anything from there until '92 when you guys made it to the Final Four and then the Elite Eight the next year. So, uh, Bearcat fans, we owe owe that team an awful lot to bring in our our program to where it is today. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's the genesis. I call it. Um, you know, the program was was high in the 61s. In fact, very soon there's going to be, we just, my, my producer from Fox Sports Ohio, David Ashbrock, produced a documentary for the game from the 1961 championship. Really? There was never been, uh, it's never been seen before. It wasn't recorded live. Oh, it's wow. It's never been recorded live. And so a local TV station did a broadcast. They recorded it, but nobody can find it. It's been lost. Huh. And so the only film was from the coaches' camera. The coaches just record their own games. Right, so right. I got you. Yeah. David Ashbrock and his brilliant genius. He also found two uh, radio calls. So he found those two radio calls, synced them together, along with the coaches' camera. So because of that, you didn't. Film was so expensive back then that. They only recorded the offense. Of, they only recorded once the ball was in. They never recorded out of bounds plays. They didn't record, um, you know. Yeah. When, don't, don't, when the ball is in play, that's when the recording started. Yeah, it's, it's a coach's film. He doesn't care about the when the ball is out of play. He wants to see the ball so in play. They, so right. So they so they put all that together. Mm-hmm. He created a score clock that made it look like it was retro, like it was actually there. So he really. A score clock. He's at the timer that synced with the game. Wow. And so Dan and I did a pregame, we did a halftime, and then we did a postgame to sort of create a document. Um, so it's going to be shown on Channel 12, KR, WKRC. We just don't know when because the NCAA uh, put a freeze on all projects being released uh-huh. that are collegiate. And I'm like, this is, you know, this this is some stuff that I just don't understand about the NCAA. They're so right. many hungry. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not their... Not their footage, right? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they didn't even film it. They, the coach filmed right. it. <laughs> so right. and you guys and you guys did all the work to put it together. That doesn't, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. But yeah, like I said, NCAA makes lots of decisions that I don't understand and agree with. So, but either way, that sounds very, very cool. I, I please let me know when that's coming out. I will definitely uh, talk about it on my show and uh, get the word out. That that would be very, very cool. I I got a question. Have you guys ever talked about doing a a documentary or anything about the 92 team about about what you're just talking about right there the camaraderie you guys had and how you came together and you know the, the run i mean from the, the you know the first year to uh, 92 to the the, the elite uh the elite eight year have you guys ever talked about doing anything like that absolutely <laughs> yeah corey's got all the footage corey does so i talked to my huh. producer yeah he's got a lot of footage he's, he, he sends it to us in our chat thread all the time so, I'm going to talk to my producer about putting it all together. He was just working on this one. Right. So, we let him get through this. Yeah. But he's going to have some footage from back in the day. He can access stuff from ESPN. We got to figure out how much the dollar amount's going to be. <laughs> right. It yeah. always comes down to money, man. <laughs> always. For NCAA fees and all right. that stuff. Right, right. And then we go out and we, we get somebody to produce it. Well, yeah. We come up with it. I, well, I guess, we, just produce it. we just gotta be executive producer. We gotta get the money for it. Right. Yeah, I guarantee you, people would definitely be interested in that because I've always, like I said, that's my favorite team. I mean, not to make you feel old or date myself, but I was in high school then <laughs> when you guys were playing. So it's been a little while, but that that was my favorite. I mean, it was between the '92 uh, team and and uh, Kenya Martin's senior year. Those are my two favorite uh, teams of all time. 
uh, for, as far as Bearcats go. I mean, in my lifetime that I've actually got to see. So, <laughs> right. So it that that sounds awesome. So, um, just I guess there one final question, and I'll let you go here. But uh, what what is your thoughts on the uh, upcoming season? You know, when we have it. That's I'm I'm looking at it as when we have it. It's going to happen. <laughs> But uh, thoughts on the Bearcats in, in 2020 and 2021. What's your what, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I'm excited because you're going to have more shooters to space the floor. Mm-hmm. You're going to have a team-centric player. When we played, like when Oscar, as great as Oscar was, leading the team in points, rebounds, assists on a team that went to back-to-back Final Fours when they played. Right. It was when he left mm-hmm. that other guys had to step up. So they had to divvy up those points, rebounds, and assists amongst other players, which brought their value up because they felt like it wasn't a one-man show and he, they can do more. Right. And they went to back-to-back. They won back-to-back championships and lost a third uh-huh. at the buzzer. Yeah, and so, some people forget that Oscar wasn't even on the team for the, when they actually won. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So when you look at the team that's going next year, there's no Jaron Cumberland. Right. There's no Trey Scott. Um, guys that put the work in and deserve all the notoriety and shot attempts and all the stuff that they got. But now you got guys who are hungry. Keith Williams, he'll be back. He just put his name out there. I, that's, I'm glad you said that. I, I was going to ask you about that. I, I really hope he comes back. <laughs> well, he hasn't signed with an agent yet, but okay. I believe um, you know, he's going to go and, and take a look and see what they want. Right, right. See, see the kind of they yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I think you should. You should, you know, check out, you know, what you need to work on and everything. Mm-hmm. The emergence of Mama Dudier. Um, a, a stronger. Hopefully, we can get a, a quicker Chris Bull. Yeah. But the fact that they have everything closed down, he's not able to work with the strength trainer, mm-hmm. is really hampering his progress right, right. now. Right. Right. But the Madsen twins, the way they shoot the ball coming in, mm-hmm. can spread the floor. Right. Um, you get Speedy Point Guard coming in. You got three A player of the year to replace Trey Scott from from Seattle uh, coming in. So you got a couple of positions still open. Then I don't know if they're going to go after grad transfers. We're still trying to go after some transfers right now. They're in that heavy transfer market. Right. They try to get some experience to come in because he wants multi position three and D players. Right. You know guys that can really stretch the floor and pick up and, and switch and do all the stuff that they want and I just love the way he assembles his teams so we may miss out on some of the guys that initially go after but it's a huge it's almost over 600 guys in the transport portal right now so it's a whole nother market wow yeah <laughs> I didn't know there was that many yes and one thing I, I loved about uh Coach Brandon and the way he coaches, and it reminds me of, of you guys in the Final Four team is, is the full full court press. That that I I think that is such a game changer that he does, and I, it it changes it speeds teams up. And they you know gets them less time in the shot clock. So I, I, that's one of the biggest things that I love that uh, John Brandon does. Yeah, and it really keeps because most teams don't press anymore. Right. Most teams do a soft press just to run a couple seconds off the clock when they put full court pressure but no trapping you know full court pressure to slow you down walk the ball up so you get the ball across half court at 22 seconds right whereas coaches he is he's trapping in the backcourt he's trying to make you pass it at least twice mm-hmm. if he can make you throw it in double team you and then make a pass somewhere there's a chance that pass gets stolen if it's a cross court pass there's a chance the back line guy can go and get a deflection tip it and grab it so yeah I love the fact that he presses as well yeah I've, I've been very very in, impressed with uh, with Coach Brandon this year I, I, I gotta say I, I didn't watch Northern Kentucky except for when they played the Bearcats and we beat them so I didn't know anything about him but uh, I'm, I'm very happy that he's the uh, the coach of the Bearcats moving forward and I, I think the, the program's in good hands I think it's great hands hey guys Hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. I'd like to thank Terry Nelson for being my very first interview here on Sports Strawberry Ice. Here's some Facebook groups that I like to mention that I help run. Hope you guys enjoyed them. Check them out. It's Bearcat Country, Reds Country, and Bengals Nation. Also, I have my own pages, Sports Strawberry Ice, on Facebook, on Twitter. Twitter handle is Jeff A. Trenopol at T-R-E-N-N-E-P-O-H-L. Also on Instagram. All those under Sports Strawberry Ice. Now, YouTube, you guys have been unbelievable. I am up to 333 subscribers. 
That is awesome. Tell all your friends about me. You get this from a Facebook link. Do me a favor. Get on YouTube and get yourself an account and subscribe to my show. I'm trying to get to 400 as fast as I can. Normally I do a Zeke of the Week, but you got the great Terry Nelson on there. You don't need a Zeke of the Week. I hope you guys really enjoyed the interview. I know I did. Until Monday, you guys have a great weekend. Stay safe. And that's your sports, baby. See ya.